Let's take a look at collateralized debt obligations, or CDOs, and also take a look at something called a credit default swap, which will come up later. CDOs are types of mortgage-backed securities. In the example we posed before, mortgage-backed securities are simple shares of a company where every share gets the same amount back. CDOs are still shares of that company, but they have different levels of how much you get back, called tranches. Let's say the investment bank wants to split Big Mortgage Corp into three tranches, equity, mezzanine, and senior. These are the actual names used in the industry in this instance. Each tranche or level holds a hand-picked number of shares from Big Mortgage Corp. Equity is the lowest level, highest risk, but highest return. They hold the shares of the riskiest mortgages. If borrowers default, holders of equity level CDOs are the first to feel the pain. However, if borrowers do end up paying up, the equity tranche gets back the most money. For example, rather than 5%, let's say they get back 7.5% on their investment. If you want to take the risk, it could pay off a lot better than other investments. The next level is mezzanine. These are the middle-of-the-road CDOs, moderate risk and moderate rates of return. Let's say they'll get back 5% of their investment. The safest level is the senior tranche. They hold very little risk but get a lower return. If a ton of borrowers default, Big Mortgage Corp is going to underpay the equity and mezzanine tranches to make sure the senior tranche gets their money. However, the senior tranche, let's say, only earns a 3.13% interest rate. CDOs are just mortgage-backed securities that have different levels of risk and different rates of return. Now, let's take a look at the actual math. For the original $100 million in loans, let's say we sold $40 million to the senior CDO, $30 million in the mezzanine, and another $30 million in the equity tranche. For simplicity here, we're going to ignore the need for the investment bank to make a profit on selling these stocks, and we're just going to look at that initial sale. For example, if we sold 400,000 shares of the senior for $100 each, that $40 million, each paying out a 3.13% interest rate each year, or $3.13 per share each year. We sold $300,000 of the mezzanine tranche for $100 each, each paying out 5% interest each year, or $5. And finally, we sold $300,000 of the equity tranche, or $100 each, returning 7.5% each year, or $7.50. The loans as a whole, meaning all the money that Big Mortgage Corp will bring in each year, is $5 million, assuming that no one defaults. If it goes perfectly, the senior tranche gets $1.25 million to split, their full $3.13 per share, the mezzanine gets $1.5 million to split, and equity gets $2.25 million to split, each tranche getting what they expected to make that year. However, let's say 20% of people default, and from now on, Big Mortgage Corp can only bring in about 80% of the original $5 million in interest each year, or $4 million per year. In this case, the senior tranche, which is the safest level, is still going to get its $1.25 million, and the mezzanine is going to get its full $1.5 million. But equity, well, they're the losers here. Equity shares get back only $1.25 million, what's left over, and that equates to $4.16 per share. They just saw their return go from 7.5% to 4.16% for the rest of the life of the share. All of a the sudden, their share is worth less than the mezzanine share. Like I said, high risk, but if the economy is good and borrowers pay their mortgages, then the equity tranche can yield high rates of return. In 2008, however, where mortgages were being given out to terrible borrowers, let's say something like 80% of all the mortgages in Big Mortgage Corp defaulted because all of the loans inside were just terrible. That means that now there will only be 20% of the original $5 million in payments, or $1 million per year. The senior tranche would get the full $1 million in payments, meaning only $2.50 per share. In this case, even the safest tranche, the senior level, had their respective return cut from 3.13% to 2.5% for the foreseeable future. For the other tranches, well, their shares just basically dropped to nothing. 
That gives you a basic understanding of CDOs. They're just a way of assigning levels of risk to mortgage-backed securities. Now, on to the big kicker, credit default swaps. Credit default swaps are essentially just insurance on a security, meaning on a share. Equity tranche buyers might buy these assets in case their shares become worthless, they would be able to get some money back so their losses aren't as bad, if anything, in the long term. In essence, this insurance shorts the market, or only pays out if the mortgage-backed securities they insure fail. It's used to protect mortgage-backed security buyers from high risk. The payout would increase based on the tranche level, but it would also cost more up front. For example, equity tranches are high risk, which would make the credit default swap for this level pretty expensive, and the swap itself would only pay out relatively a little. Basically just enough to cover the losses and lessen the blow. If we go to the senior tranche, credit default swaps would be cheap. Since credit default swaps are bets that the market will fail or the underlying security will lose value, that's pretty unlikely for the senior tranche, so they don't have to be that expensive. That said, it also means they have a very high rate of return or payout when this does happen. After all, why would investors buy the credit default swap if they didn't pay out a ton, since for the senior tranche they were unlikely to pay out at all? Basically, credit default swaps are just insurance on a stock, just like insurance on a car. In 2008, though, this market got interesting. You don't have to own the underlying security or stock to purchase the credit default swap on it. Banks in 2008 were willing to sell credit default swaps on senior tranche CDOs, or just CDOs in general, since it was assumed that there was a crazy tiny chance that these CDOs or mortgage-backed securities would pay out. To the banks, it was basically free money, selling something that would never cost them anything, or so they thought. No one in theory would want to buy that though, either. Senior tranches and high-level rated mortgage-backed securities don't lose money, so buying a credit default swap for these assets would be like throwing away money. Or, in other words, it would be like shorting the entire mortgage market. Buying credit default swaps for senior tranches or AAA rated mortgage backed securities is like betting even the best of the mortgage market is going to default, meaning that the rest of the mortgage market would default and collapse as well. In 2008, a few people dug into the mortgage backed security market. They saw that credit agencies were misvaluing the assets in these securities. They saw that even senior tranches were crap, and they bought a ton of credit default swaps. This is like realizing your neighbor is a terrible driver and buying insurance on his car so that when he crashes, you get paid. Banks were happy to oblige because they themselves didn't know how bad the CDO securities were. They themselves didn't even look at what was making up their mortgage-backed securities that they were selling. When the market did collapse, the people who shorted the market by buying credit default swaps got a massive payday, like 500% return. So if they bought the credit default swap for $100, they'd instantly get back $500 when the market collapsed. If you want to see this in action, watch the movie The Big Short. And there you have it. There are some of the key variables in the mortgage market, some of the basic functions, and a little description on the 2008 mortgage market collapse.